Getting your Google Ads bidding strategy right is the single most important setting in a Google Ads campaign. I'm kind of a big deal. Really? Now, so many Google advertisers get this wrong and it really hurts their results. In this video, I'm going to show you the best Google Ads bidding strategy. So to walk you through this, I'm in an example Google Ad account. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on new campaign. I'm going to select sales uh, for demonstration purposes. Don't worry about all these errors. This is because this is an example Google Ad account. I'm just gonna click continue. And then for my campaign type, I'm going to go ahead and select performance max. What I'm about to talk about applies to other campaign types as well, but I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more as we go through. Now, once we've selected our campaign, campaign type, campaign objective, we come through to this bidding section. And your bidding strategy, as I already mentioned, is incredibly important. Now you can see that the default here for a performance max campaign is conversion value, and we have the option to change that to conversion. So just to quickly explain the difference between the two. So conversion value identifies that certain conversions are worth more to your business than others, and then actively pursues the ones that are worth more. So for example, if you're an e-commerce business and your average order value is $40, but some people spend $80 and some people spend $20. By maximizing for conversion value, Google is going to try and get you more of the $80 conversions. They know that that is more valuable to your business and that's what they're going to go after. And um, conversions is just going to treat every single one of those purchases as the same and therefore not uh, prioritize the more valuable conversions. So the default is conversion value and absolutely fine to start with that or conversions depending on uh, uh, your business as I've just described, but we're going to want to change that later on. And, and that's the, the really tricky part to get right, but also the really exciting part in terms of if you do get this right, it can make a massive difference to your Google ad results. Now, of course, there are other campaign types that will give you different bidding strategy options. For example, if you were to create a search campaign, instead of optimizing for conversions or conversion value could instead optimize for clicks, get as many clicks as possible. Not something I'd recommend most advertisers use. Why would you want to get the lowest possible cost per click or as many clicks as possible if those people don't then go on to convert. Most businesses would much rather optimize for the conversion because that's far more valuable to their business. Now, there are some specific circumstances where you may not be able to track conversions if you're sending people to your website and then there's third party um, setups where people purchase or become a lead or something and you're not able to track conversions, then okay, fine, you might want to optimize for clicks or perhaps you just want people to come through to your website, read a blog post or something like that. You don't care if they go on and convert, in which case, yes, optimize for clicks. But those are fairly niche cases. Most businesses, that's not going to apply. You're going to want to optimize for conversions, conversion value, even if you're using one of those other campaign types that gives you different options than what we can see um, right here, okay? Just wanted to, uh, to quickly explain that. Okay, so coming back to this performance max campaign, and as I said, what I'm about to describe here, um, from a bidding strategy standpoint applies to other campaign types as well. We'll start with conversions or conversion value, but at some point we're going to want to set a target return on ad spend, a target ROAS or a target CPA. So if for example, we've selected conversion value as our bidding strategy, we can tick this little box here that says set a target return on ad spend. It is optional, but if we select that, we then select, we can then enter a percentage. So for example, I could enter a 300% target ROAS. So for every 100 pounds I spend on Google, ads, I want at least 300 pound back. That's my target, a 3xing on, on my money, okay? So if you go with conversion value, you get the option to, to set a target return on ad spend. If you go with conversions, as I said, because all your conversions are worth the same, um, then a ROAS doesn't necessarily make sense. In those circumstances, um, you get the option to set a target CPA, cost per action. So instead of a, a percentage, this could be, I only want to pay you know, 50 pounds per lead or 20 pounds per lead or, or whatever it is for your business. Um, and I've got other videos, by the way, that show you how to calculate all those numbers and what they should be for your business given the products and services that you sell. Okay, so setting a target CPA as we've got here, or if we switch back to our conversion value, a target ROAS, a target return on ad spend, is really difficult to get right, but it is really important. It can absolutely make or break a Google ad campaign. And what you would typically see when you start a new Google ad campaign, you run it, you using uh, the conversions or conversion value bidding strategy without the target option uh, for each one selected is that Google will start recommending that you add in a target ROAS or target CPA fairly quickly. We've seen those notifications pop up within a Google ad account within a week, 10 days, two weeks. Um, and they're definitely pushing us toward this. And it is something that you want to do. But the first thing I would say is that I would caution you around doing it too quickly. I think it's best to wait at least a month, your campaign's been live a month, before you go ahead and set a target. And there's a few reasons for that. I have found that it's really important to first establish a stable baseline. What is realistic in terms of the return on ad spend that you can generate? What is realistic in terms of your CPA? 
When your campaign's really new, it's very difficult to work that out. Also, with new campaigns, you often have fluctuating results. You don't want to sort of just look at the best possible day or the worst possible day and think that those are realistic results and that's what's going to be averaged out at over the next few months because it's probably going to be somewhere in between. So I think you want to give that campaign enough time so that you get through those initial fluctuations when campaigns are new as Google's optimization process is kicking in and it's learning and trying to get you the best possible results. You want to get through that period and then you want to wait long enough where you're like, we're pretty sure that this is a stable return on ad spend. This is a stable cost per action. I think this would be a good target to start with. So you need to get through that first part um, and wait until you've got enough data to be able to do so. And Google sometimes recommend that you turn this on, turn these targets on before you've actually reached that point. The other thing when it comes to turning on either target ROAS or target CPA is that you want to keep that number fairly consistent. So you don't want to go in and set a target ROAS today and then three days later be changing it to another number and then a week after that be changing it to another number. You really want to set it and keep it stable. When you make this change, when you set a target, that is informing Google around what it is that you want, what's, what's important to your business, perhaps what's the minimum viable level of success your Google Ad campaign needs to have for you to be able to continue advertising. And that's a big shift. So Google's going to have to do a lot of testing, a lot of optimizing the campaign around that objective. And if you're constantly tweaking that, how is Google's optimization process supposed to work? It's OK, we thought we were going after this, but that's not right. We've changed it three days later and that's not right. And, and that's just not a good environment for your Google Ad campaign to perform best, particularly when we're using things like Performance Max, where we are really heavily relying on you know, Google's machine learning process and AI to do a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of optimization. We need to provide stability. So I'd recommend that you wait long enough where you've got um, data that you can be fairly confident is pretty accurate at that point. Then when you do set your target ROAS, target CPA, you leave it at that number for a good amount of time. That doesn't mean you can never improve it, never increase your target ROAS or decrease your target CPA. Both of those are the numbers heading in the right direction um, over time. You absolutely can, but you don't want to be doing it too frequently. So. If we set a target ROAS and actually we find that over the three, four weeks after we've set that, we're doing better than our target, great. Maybe we'll look to increase the target again uh, a little bit. So we go from 300% in this example to 350 or 400%. And then we give it another chunk of time. Can we go ahead and improve that again? There will obviously be a ceiling, but that's how you can improve things over time. Um, you don't want to be doing that too quickly and making adjustments too quickly. Very similar to the logic around scaling. We don't want to be scaling budgets too quickly um, and, and worsening our results by by being impatient, which is, I know we've all been there as advertisers, right? We all want the best results possible, particularly if we've had good results early on, we wanna spend as much as possible, get more, 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 more. But that's often not the best way to go. Uh, being a bit more patient is, is, is normally something that I advise a lot of advertisers to be. Okay, so in a second, I'm gonna show you how to set your initial um, target CPA or target ROAS. Before I do, I just wanna quickly mention our done for you Google advertising services. So my company can create, manage, and optimize your Google ad campaigns for you. We've worked with tons of different businesses in tons of different industries, help them achieve some fantastic results. We can take all that workload off your hand and hopefully improve your ROAS or decrease your CPA, depending on what it is that you're, you're after from your your, your Google Ad campaign. So if you're interested, there's a link in the video description below. Go ahead and click on that, come through to our website and you can book a free call with one of my team members to find out more information. No obligation, of course, you can just find out more info. And um, yeah, hopefully we get a chance to work together. Now, when you're making that transition from conversions or conversion value bidding strategy to a target ROAS or target CPA, what should your initial number be? How, how do you work that out? Where a lot of Google advertisers go wrong is they set the number at what they want it to be and a number that's just not realistic. And if it's just not realistic, as we've already discussed, Google needs to optimize around that. If you're just not going to get it, how is Google supposed to optimize? How are they going to do, deliver? They're not going to be able to work it out. One of the scenarios that we often see if you set a, a target ROAS too high, for example, is that your budget won't be spent. That's probably not what you want as a, as a Google advertiser. So I think it's really important to be realistic. So you want to take a look at where your ROAS is, where your CPA is, and basically start with a target of that number. I would encourage you to not try and be a bit ambitious. So often I'll speak to people, they say, oh, what's your current CPA? And they say, oh, my current CPA is 25 pounds, for example. And then you take a look at their ad account and for a while it was 25 pounds, but if we actually look over the last month, the average is more like 35 pounds, they just had a good few days. 
I'm often we're optimistic, we're marketers, we're trying to sell things. It's kind of natural to the, the type of personality that gets involved in Google ad campaigns and things like that to overestimate how well things are doing or have done, but just really have a look at that data. That's why we've run the campaign for a while before we make this switch and go, what's my average over that time period? Let's start there. As I've already described, you can increase that over time, but let's start there. There are also a couple of things that you need to be aware of. So when you switch from conversions, conversion value to either of the target options, Options, and that is a big change for your Google Ad campaign. It's a big change around optimization. It's a big change around how that campaign is going to perform. So it's absolutely to be expected and okay if your results worsen initially. Don't let that worry you. We know that these systems are smart. We know the AI is gonna kick in and work out how best to display our ads to get us the best possible results. But for the first few days after you make that change, you might see a drop off. I see a lot of advertisers have tried that. They saw a drop off, they turned it back off again. That's probably not the best thing for you long-term. So that's just something that you, you need to weather the storm on a little bit, just like whenever you're making any big optimization change within a campaign, it's likely to worsen things initially because there's all a whole bunch of testing that needs to happen and gets triggered based off of that change that you've made. The other thing is to not focus too heavily on CPC, on your cost per click. So when you make this change, yes, results are going to worsen and probably fluctuate, so your CPC will spike initially. But even over time, once you add in your target, you're likely to see a higher CPC in our experience than if you don't have a target ROAS or don't have a target CPA set. That shouldn't worry you if your ROAS is better, your CPA is lower. If your numbers are improving, it's absolutely fine to pay more for clicks. It's kind of getting back to what I discussed earlier around bidding strategies of why you normally don't want to optimize for as many clicks as possible because who cares about clicks if those people don't go on to convert? The conversion is far more important. The conversion is far more valuable. That's what we want to optimize for. And with targets in place, we do typically see higher cost per clicks than even using uh, maximized conversions or maximized conversion value as our bidding strategies without the targets. But we do see better results in terms of that ROAS or that CPA. So again, just something you need to be aware of when you're making this shift. Now, there's a section on this page that you may have spotted that we haven't yet discussed, and that's this customer acquisition section. And Google has recently introduced some exciting and new bidding strategy options that are perfect for certain types of businesses. I explain exactly what they are and how they work in this video here. If you're serious about getting great results from Google Ads, you have to take advantage of the latest features. So go ahead and check this out.